In this tutorial I'm going to look at the fuels which are used primarily for heating and cooking and how we can choose a particular fuel in a particular scenario. We'll look at a simple way of remembering the different factors that you might consider when choosing a particular fuel for a particular use. When we consider the type of fuels we might use in the home, we might think of natural gas that our central heating runs on. We might consider coal or wood that we might use in a solid fuel stove. Some of us that live too far from the gas supply may have, for example, liquid petroleum gas in a tank outside the home, which is piped into the house, or we might use heating oil as our central heating boiler fuel. Although we might have an electric cooker, electricity is not a fuel. Electricity is a source of energy, but a fuel is a substance that reacts with oxygen in order to release useful energy, usually by burning. And of course, electricity isn't a fuel because electricity doesn't burn. It is a form of energy, but it is not a fuel. A fuel needs to be able to burn. Let's imagine we live in a cabin in the woods in Canada, 10 miles from the nearest town. There's no mains, electricity or gas. You need to heat and light your cabin and you need to cook. So what fuel or fuels would you choose and why? You might choose wood for your heating because it's freely available, it's very close and there's plenty of it, it's not going to run out. You might choose to make electricity by using a diesel generator. Diesel isn't very accessible because it's in the nearest town, but you can store that relatively easily outside your cabin. So when we're choosing a fuel for a particular task, we have to consider a number of different factors, and these factors are quite easy to remember. Just need to remember the acronym TEACUPS. For toxicity, this is, is the fuel poisonous? Is it dangerous to handle? For energy value, that's how much energy do we get per kilogram or per gram, or indeed for every pound that we spend on the fuel. Availability looks at two aspects. First of all, is it available locally? And secondly, is it going to be available for a long time or is that fuel going to run out fairly soon? Is it a sustainable fuel that you can imagine being able to be used for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years? The next one is cost. How much does it cost per kilogram, say, of the fuel? The usability is how easy is it to light? Is it very flammable? For pollution, we need to consider what gases might be produced when it's burned. Is it going to produce clean gases or is it going to produce, for example, sulphur dioxide or nitrogen oxide, which could pollute the atmosphere? Finally, for storage, we might need to consider whether we've got room to store, for example, coal or wood outside the house. If we live in a flat on the fourth floor of a building, it's hardly feasible to have a coal fire because we can't store coal in a bunker. Fuels such as natural gas and oil are much easier because they can be stored away from the house or indeed in the case of natural gas doesn't need to be stored at all, simply piped in as and when we need it. Here's a past exam question. Phil wants to choose a fuel to heat his house. Two important factors Phil needs to think about when choosing a fuel are the cost of the fuel and the energy release per gram. So just two other important factors which Phil needs to think about. Or we might consider the storage. We might say, does the fuel need a lot of space to store it? And we might also consider the availability. Is the fuel available to buy locally? And here's the answer. 
I wrote about the availability. I wrote about the space needed to store the fuel, but you could have written about how easy it is to light, in other words, the usability. And you could also have written, for example, about whether it's toxic or are there any harmful fumes which are produced like poisonous carbon monoxide when it burns.